If you have studied geometry, which I'm sure you have during your school days, you must be remembering that a straight line is nothing but a series of dots. The same way, our economy is a series of small activities which leads to a gra greater, grander results. And the biggest economy in this world, which is currently at $25.6 trillion, is the US economy. And a small dot in that economy is $400 billion biotech industry. The biotech industry in US is around $400 billion. In India, it is around $80 billion. And this dot is going to grow into a straight line, a bigger line in the future, in the near future. But how will it impact you and me and all the biotechies in this world? That is what we are going to investigate in this video. Now, first things first, the future of biotech jobs is bright and how that we will see a little later but for now I want to tell you that we have to be ready for the changes which is going to come in the near future by near future I mean to say five seven and ten years okay so if you are a BSc ten years if you are a master's seven years and if you are a PhD five years these are the metrics which I wanted to highlight that you have to be ready for the change which is going to happen in the next few years. First things first, your biotech jobs are going to shift and become global. So what you are seeing is a 300 or $400 billion dot in the US economy, which is biotech industry. It is going to go to a trillion dollars in the next seven years. And then the American uh, companies will realize that if we outsource this to other countries, we can save money and we can do better. And because India has the biggest set of manpower resource in the world in biotech with the English language as their first language, they will prefer India as their first stop. So that is where the biotech jobs are going to shift to India very, very soon. And a lot of companies have already started doing this. Current trends in the biotech industry, as you already know, we have seen the advancement in genomics and genomic editing. Now, CRISPR and gene editing has revolutionized, it is scalable, it is low priced and that is leading to a lot of projects being outsourced from the US to India. In fact, we also got a lot of inquiries if we can do some genomic editing, gene editing and uh, if we could run some projects. So, that is that has already started. The second thing what we are seeing is the biopharmaceutical innovations. Now, whether it is novel biological drugs or whether it is therapies, gene therapies or whether it is um, generics all of these are gaining uh, popularity and gaining traction now the next thing which we are seeing in india as well as us as well as across the globe is digital health transformation digital health integration i'm sure you must have seen a lot of smart watches which can now measure your lot of metabolic activity a lot of research is happening on how we can integrate the sensor so that they can identify and measure the key vitals of our body including the blood sugar level and that means the moment these devices are uh, created are uh, are already in place then all this manufacturing will shift to india because india is targeting to be a 5 trillion dollar economy in the next few years and indian government is highlighting and uh, uh, stressing on the manufacturing side of it so you have three current trends right now one is genomic editing Second is your biopharmaceutical innovations and the third is digital health integrations. Now, let's jump in and see how it will shape up our future. Now, while all these three trends are happening, there is something happening in the IT industry which has got a very strong correlation and coherence with the biotech industry and that is artificial intelligence and machine learning. Now, what if we could augment our current biotech processes using AI and ML, including the drug discovery, including agricultural processes. So basically AI and ML can be integrated into anything and everything. So that is one uh, cross domain function which is going to come in. The next cross domain function which we are looking at is 3D printing and to be more specific 3D bioprinting. So we are seeing a lot of 3D bioprinting companies in India, US, European Union as well as Australia and these Enabling of the tissues and organs will lead to a completely different industry 
of transplantation of organs, right? So today you have to have wait for the donor. Tomorrow you may not have. And the moment that happens, the biotech industry will start shifting towards that also. So you have AIML, you have the 3D bioprinting. The next cross-domain function is nanotechnology. Now, this is where you advance the drug de uh, delivery system. So, previous was drug discovery system. This is the drug delivery system. You see, when we take a tablet orally, it has to pass through the acid in our stomach and many of therapeutic things get lost or maybe they don't get even absorbed through the intestine, right? So that is where the injections came into picture. But injections are painful procedures. What if we could target, such as the cancer cell or such as the, the target cell, where exactly the problem is, we just deliver the drug only there and, and in a small quantity so that it is not toxic to the body and the job is done. Right. It's like if the crime is in a part of Bangalore, you don't put a curfew in entire Bangalore, right? So the same way, nanotechnology is going to be the third cross-domain function which is going to help the biotech job shift into this direction. So, so far we spoke about three core trends and three cross-domain trends which is going to influence the biotech industry. Now, let's look at some other things which will impact you and that is the skills and qualification. Now on internet we have two types of people. One is believer, one is non-believer. See non-believer would have already stopped watching this video thinking that hey this is never gonna happen but the believers are still with me so I'm going to tell for them. Now the believers you have to know this that the jobs in the biotech industry is going to shift from US to India. The innovation will happen in US, production and manufacturing will happen in India. The research which is costlier in US will happen in India and if you are ready, you will be the person who will be doing this. So the first is adaptability, being adaptable. Some people are like, no, no, I'll speak only Hindi. I don't want English. If you're not adaptable, how would you be able to fit into a job which is coming from a US company in India, right? We got a, uh, you know, this fire scholarship right now we are, where we have a project from a Swiss company. So adaptability is very, very important. You have to be adaptable. The second is having a collaborative mindset. So you have to highlight, you have to first gain uh, teamwork experience. You have to gain the communication experience so that your effective teamwork and effective communication experience will help you get into this interdisciplinary team, interdisciplinary work, and then you can do better and you can get much better employment opportunity. The third will be data analysis proficiency. Agreed that computers are there. Agreed AI will be there. But what you are capable of, the AI may not be ever be able to keep, you do that, right? So that is data analysis. A lot of data will come to you. You should be able to analyze. You should be able to look at the graph and find the trend, extrapolate the graph or interpolate it and find out what exactly is missing in the data and fix it. So this is where your adaptability your collaborative mindset and your data analysis proficiency will help. Now, these are skills, not qualification, right? Hold on a second. I'm going to come to that also. Now, see, anybody who has got a degree, bachelor's, master's or PhD in life sciences will be eligible to do these kind of jobs. But the moment you get into super specialization, you have to keep in mind, then, then you cannot get into the broader jobs, right? So, it is always good to get into super specialization, but you should know that there may not be industry to absorb me later. For example, if I do uh, research on marine biology, there are not many companies hiring for marine biology. But if I do a research on CRISPR, there are many companies hiring for CRISPR. So this you have to keep in mind. If I do research on bioinformatics or use bioinformatics, my chances of getting hired is high, uh, higher. So you have to understand this, that the broader techniques or broader skill set is the higher your chances of getting absorbed. So do suppose super specialization but at the same time keep your options open. So the challenges which you will face is the first is market dynamics. See today I'm saying the jobs will shift from US to India. 40 years later the same jobs may shift from India to Malaysia and Indonesia. Right? But to avoid that from happening we all have to be ready with adaptation, you have to be flexible to do the jobs which are going to come up and we have to be open to global opportunities. See, there can be situations where you may find a job in Illumina and uh, you are like, no, no, I want a job in India. So, you know, 
uh, if you, if there is a bigger job outside, do it. There's no harm in going abroad and doing or, or being in India. As long as you are growing in your career, that's important. Distance is not important. Displacement is important. How long you travel doesn't matter, but which direction you went, that is important. And that is where you have to understand the competitive job dynamics of this industry. Now, next thing will be how to stay relevant. Uh, for example, many of you are PhDs and watching this video and you'll be like, Sir, uh, we are feeling irrelevant because I did PhD on something. But now that thing is already gone, a lot of research already done. So how to stay relevant? You have to find out ways to stay relevant. There are various courses, skill development, upskilling, reskilling, cross-skilling courses at Biotechnica or elsewhere. We also provide scholarship to a lot of meritorious students. You can also develop an entrepreneurial and intrapreneurial mindset. There can be situations where you are also doing research and at the same time you are handling an administrative job in the same company. So you have to be ready for that kind of mindset. And you have to do a lot of networking and collaboration. If I tell you that, hey, uh, do you know this person? You'll be like, no, I don't know. The next minute, go Google him out, find out what all research papers he has published, go and connect with him on LinkedIn and talk to him, commend him, find out what he is doing currently and then offer your services. Maybe he'll help. So that is where networking is a very, very important thing. I've made a separate video on the same, which you can look at. The next one will be uh, gaining hands-on experience and training. Many students come to me saying that my college has taught me theory. Frankly speaking, most of the colleges are commercial and they should be. Why not they should be? Because of course they have to employ so many people, but at the same time, the work should be done and that is not being done, that is sad. So they are, if they are charging you a bomb as fees, at least there should be a um, lab set up. And uh, if it is not there, then you should always go for some kind of hands-on experience. You can always come at Biotechnica, we'll provide you the hands-on experience. We'll provide you industry internship in bioinformatics, molecular biology. We will provide you professional certifications, which is recognized throughout the industry globally. And then you will be ready. Now, at the same time, I want to tell you this, that the biotech jobs will shift. So will you, right? But at the same time, if you are uh, thinking that, okay, well, my studies are done 20 years back, so I don't think I need it again. You will need it because the industry is dynamic. Industry is in a flux, constant flux. Newer ways of doing things are coming up. And I'm glad to say that Biotechnica is catalyzing those newer things. And if you want to be a part of Biotechnica, uh, please be subscribed to our channels, uh, YouTube channel or Instagram or wherever you can, LinkedIn, and uh, pursue some courses at Biotechnica. You will realize that how important it is to keep updating your knowledge and skills just uh, two minutes or I think 10 minutes back before I started this video, I had a professor from Indonesia who just finished his molecular biology course and then he was asking for the certificate. So you can imagine, an uh, Indonesian professor is updating his knowledge. Why shouldn't you? So the last concluding lines for all of you is have a beginner's mindset. Have a learning mindset. Have an innovation mindset. Have a global perspective of the entire uh, industry, not just the Indian perspective, because Indian perspective is 80 billion. The global perspective is probably 800 billion. And uh, continuous adaptation is the need of the hour if you want to win in this dynamic, always shifting, always moving forward industry called biotech industry. So these are my thoughts about uh, this topic. I hope you liked it. I'm sure you have some question or you probably, I missed some point which you would like to add. So put them down in the comment section so that the entire community is benefited. And if you want to reach me, if you want to have say, any kind of feedback or anything you want to, want to tell me, then you can always reach me out at shaker at biotechnica.org. Thank you so much. See you soon in the next one. Until then, keep shining. Bye-bye.